Hello friends and welcome. So today I have a very exciting video for you, at least I think so, because this is something I'm very passionate about. It is a video about Harry Potter and me rereading the Goblet of Fire. So why am I rereading the entire Harry Potter series? Because I only ever read the books in my own language, which is Dutch, Nederlands, and I never actually read them in the original language English and I just thought that this would give me a different experience because let me tell you a lot of words are very very different like it doesn't even come close to a translation of the actual word so for instance Hogwarts is called Schweinstein in Dutch and Mm, I don't see any resemblance there. Of course the story is the same, but still I think it's a very different experience. And also it's just really fun to reread something when you're older because it gives you a different perspective. And along the way I put some sticky notes in the book. Um, there's not really a system going on here, it's just me having questions or thoughts about stuff. Uh, so yeah, I thought it would be fun to share them with you guys and start a discussion. So let's talk some Harry Potter and if you like these kind of videos then don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you never miss another video of me again. Now let's get into it. So something that I thought of while um, preparing this video is the first moment that I got introduced to Harry Potter and that was thanks to my mom. I remember that she was standing in the doorway and just coming in and going like, I've got something for you, <laughs> it's Harry Potter. And I was looking at her like, Harry Potter? What's that? That's such an odd name. And I don't know for how many months, but I honestly thought that Harry Potter was the author of the books until I actually picked the book up and started reading it and fell in love with it, obviously. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty funny when I think back to that. I don't think there's anyone anymore that doesn't know who Harry Potter is, but just to be safe, this is Harry Potter and he goes through this wizarding school in a wizarding world and he just goes on a lot of adventures with his friends Hermione and Ron. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire we get introduced to so many new stuff in the wizarding world. Um, you have new characters, background stories, new creatures, uh, new spells. It's just there's a lot of stuff going on which I absolutely love and the ending is pretty dark and it's also like a puzzle that comes together in the last four or five chapters. So yeah, I just think this is a very good book in the series and I gave this one five stars. So of course I'm going to share with you guys my ideas, my thoughts, maybe start a discussion about the book, but one of the things that I wanted to do first is <laughs> give you some of the spells that were in this book because those kind of triggered my memory and I forgot most of them so I thought it would be fun to just give you the spells and you can guess what that spell does. Okay, so here we go. Sonorous, Mors Morda, Prior Incantato, Delitrius, Fernancler, Denzagio. We also get introduced to the Impediment Jinx and the four point spell. So if you got them all right, let me know in the comments down below. I'm very curious because a lot of these spells I forgot. What I absolutely love about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and something that really um, stood out for me is the amount of background stories. First up we have Fred and George Weasley who kind of have their story within the story um, and I thought that was just so fun. You just get to know them a little bit better and you know their goal in life, like they want to start their own shop and they want to call it Weasley's Wizard Weezes and it all starts with the Chong Chong Toffee and then they go to Ludo Bagman. Uh, of course there's this event with the Leprechaun Gold. It's just really fun to read about. Another uh, mini story that caught my eye is the improper use of Magic Office and that is something that is named a couple of times and at one point Hermione is explaining something that she read that if you're an Animagus you have to register at this office and tell them what kind of animal you are etc. So I thought that was really fun to read about and there's this story that is probably forgotten by a lot of you because it's just one or two pages in the book but there's a moment when Bill and um, Mrs. Weasley come to Hogwarts to um, support Harry in the Triwizard Tournament and they are 
going on this walking tour of the grounds and then Mrs. Wheatley shares some stuff about her past and she mentions Ock who apparently was the gamekeeper before Hagrid. So from now on if you ever get asked who was the previous gamekeeper at Hogwarts now you know. The most interesting backstories though were the background stories of Neville Hagrid and Voldemort. What I thought was interesting about Hagrid's background is that we get to know him a little bit better, like how he became this giant of a man because he had a giant as a mother and a normal human as a father and he tells Madame Maxine about how his mother left when he was three or something and I just thought that was such a good background story that just gives you a little bit more insight into Hagrid. We also learn more about Neville Longbottom and that is so interesting but heartbreaking at the same time because we learn that both his parents are in St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies and Injuries. And it says here, I believe Neville visits them with his grandmother during the holidays. They do not recognize him. I think it's so sad to read about it. It just explains a lot about Neville, the way he reacts to certain things, why he was raised by his grandmother. It's just a very interesting background story that is revealed in the Goblet of Fire. And the most interesting background story to me in this book is the one about Lord Voldemort because it begins and it ends with him, with his background story. In the first chapter we get to see his house where he grew up in and then in one of the last scenes we go to the graveyard where his father is buried and he tells us a little bit about his father how he left his mother because he found out that she um, has magic powers and then his mother dies in childbirth and then he is raised at an orphanage so it kind of explains you uh, why Lord Voldemort is the person he is today. This next bit I want to share with you guys are two magical creatures that really stood out for me and I thought it would be fun to remind you of them. So first up we have the Bubo Tubers which are slug-like black plants that have boils on them that you have to squeeze uh, to get the pus out and the pus is then gathered by Professor Sprout. Um, she gives it to Madame Pomfrey who can make a cure for acne but this only works when it's diluted so if it's not diluted the bubotuber pus then it creates uh, painful boils on the skin if you touch it. And that is actually something that happens in the book when Hermione gets an envelope filled with bubo 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 tuber pus and she gets these boils on her skin. It's a very difficult word. It's kind of a tongue twister for me. Any other magical creature that I thought was really fun to read about in this book is the Blast and its Scroots. So that is kind of a shellless lobster that has no end or beginning, no mouth or tail. It's just a thing that can blast from its end, which he doesn't have. So you can't really tell if it's his end. So yeah, that's just... <laughs> I just thought that was genius, like these creatures, the lessons that he's giving for the students with these creatures, it's just hilarious. And I had a great time reading about the boss and the Scroots. Another thing that I found really enjoyable while reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is that some of these chapters are just so magical. So I've narrowed it down to two favorite chapters. And the first one is the weighing of the wands. I just thought that that was such a cute chapter. It's very short actually. It's also the scene where uh, Bill and Mrs. Weasley are visiting Harry for the ground tour uh, but there's also this ritual of the weighing of the wands and I just found that to be a very enjoyable chapter to read. And my second favorite chapter from this book is The Pensive. First of all because we get introduced to what it is and how it can be used and second of all because we get to learn so much from the past. So we get to see the young Dumbledore, uh, we get to see Karkaroff um, standing trial, uh, there's something about Luna Bagman, about Barty Crouch Jr. So there's a lot of information in that one chapter and that just made it very intense and very fun to read. This next bit is just all about me um, being overly critical probably but it's just some stuff that raised questions with me and I thought it would be fun to 
discuss them with you and maybe some of you guys have answers for the questions that I have. But there's this part between Sirius and Harry that they want to communicate with each other but of course Sirius is still a wanted man so they have to be careful about how to uh, communicate. So there's this um, letter that Sirius sends to Harry in which it says don't use head week, keep changing owls and don't worry about me, just watch out for yourself. So it's about the bit that says keep changing owls. So then we fast forward in the story and we have Harry who is waiting for the return of the brown owl he had sent to Sirius. So he opens the letter, it's very short and he immediately wants to um, write a reply and sends the owl back straight away. So that was interesting to me because Sirius told him keep changing owls and now he is waiting for the return of the brown owl and he is sending it back. So that means this owl has gone back and forth like at least four times. That's not changing the owls, Harry. That is putting someone in danger. So that was something that really like made me think about the situation and I was like, why would you do that? Maybe that's just me being overly critical or overanalyzing the story, or maybe it's Harry being a teenage boy or being a bit impulsive, but it just caught my eye. My next question is about Harry who is standing at the lake and is about to start the second task. So it says, Harry pulled off his shoes and socks, pulled the handful of gillyweed out of his pocket, stuffed it into his mouth, and wade it out into the lake. What I just found interesting about this part is that it's very descriptive. So it says he pulled up his shoes and his socks, but it doesn't say anything about his glasses. And I just thought that was like curious because how can you go into a lake, save a bunch of people and then come up again and just have your glasses still there and being able to see through them. So I don't know how it is in the movies because I can't remember but at least in the book, it doesn't say anything about where he puts his glasses. So this next part made me question the character of Mrs. Weasley, uh, because it says that she is in a conversation with Amos, so that's the dad of Cedric Diggory, and she tells him, Rita Skeeter goes out of her way to cause trouble, Amos. I would have thought you'd know that working at the ministry. So she's kind of correcting him, um, like not to believe the things that Rita Skeeter writes. And then, not one and a half page later, um, she is uh, sitting at the table with Hermione and Harry and she read this article about Hermione being the girlfriend of Harry. And Harry says, Mrs. Weasley, you didn't believe that rubbish Rita Skeeter wrote in Witch Weekly, did you? Because Hermione's not my girlfriend. Oh, said Mrs. Weasley, no, of course I didn't. But actually she did because he was giving Hermione like no attention and being very awkward towards her. She's being a bit petty, right? She is telling someone else not to be bothered by Rita Skeeter, do not believe what she writes. But she is being rude and a little bit mean to Hermione because she believes the article that says that Hermione is Harry's girlfriend and Harry has to correct her and say it's not true. And then all of a sudden she is being polite again and normal to Hermione. So that put Mrs. Weasley in a different light. This next part is probably me being silly, but I just, it made me laugh a bit. And it's such a serious moment. It's the moment that Harry um, is at the graveyard and Lord Voldemort is being resurrected. Um, and it says the thin man stepped out of the cauldron staring at Harry and Harry stared back into the face that had haunted his nightmares for three years. So I just thought to myself, there's this big cauldron. You just got your body back. It's probably a bit wobbly. Uh, it feels weird. You're in a hot water cauldron. Like, how do you do that? How do you step out of a cauldron when you just got your body back staring at Harry? That must have been awkward. Like there's no steps, you can't get out of it like in an easy way. So did he float out of it? Did he use magic? So yeah, that's just me and my imagination. <laughs> this next part is about Barty Crouch Jr. who is explaining to Harry and Winky um, how he did it. So he's telling them, I transfigured my father's body. Uh, he became a bone. I buried it while wearing the invisibility cloak. So. 
I don't really get why he transfigured the body into a bone because the goal is that it's never found and I just thought about this and I thought why not transfigure it into something that's like less uh, gruesome like a bone is still an indication of maybe a body unless he wanted it to look like it was a bone from Fang because he buried it near Hagrid's cabin but still I don't like why wouldn't you just transfigure the body into a flower or maybe a pumpkin or something yeah I don't know let me know your theory about this my last point of discussion is the part where we get the information that mad Moody was imprisoned in his own trunk for 10 months that just made me wonder how did this guy survive you need to eat you need to drink you need to go to the toilet like where did he do all those things like was there a corner where he could go to when he needed to like do his thing or was he just under a spell did he sleep when you don't have anything like no fluids no food it's you're not gonna survive right so how did he do that Ooh, that felt good like sharing my thoughts and my ideas with you guys I am so curious to see if you guys want to start a discussion with me or what your thoughts are so please do let me know in the comments down below and I thought it would be nice to end this video with one of my favorite quotes from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and one that is very fitting for the things that are going on right now in the world. It is a quote from Albus Dumbledore and he says we are only as strong as we are united as weak as we are divided. And with that guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like this video and let's stay in touch.